Hi everyone, I'm Jody. Welcome to my channel. I'm really glad that you're here today. So today is one of those tutorials that you guys have asked for. It's all about that glow from within, aka strobing look that was all over the runways and will be part of the beauty trends for winter of 2023. When it's done correctly and maturely modified, this trend can be stunning. So we're gonna do that look together today. In fact, in a few minutes, we're gonna not have on all this makeup and I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to achieve the look. A couple things to know is throughout this tutorial, we're gonna talk about the differences in the application and the layering of the application for dry skin, combination skin, normal skin, and or oily skin because oily skin needs to take a little bit different path but I'm gonna walk you through it. The other things to remember is if you want this to be a day look, an everyday type look, or an evening look. There's ways to apply it that's a little bit different for those two scenarios, and I'm gonna share those with you as well. Achieving a healthy glow from within look really is 50% makeup and 50% skincare, because your skin is going to show through. So having a good skincare program is half of achieving this look. If you don't have a good skincare program or it seems a little confusing which products to use, which ones are working, what does my dermatologist should suggest, my skin's more dry now because of winter, what should I be using, then you might wanna check out the 90 day skincare workbook and I'll link it right here for you. It's really helpful in identifying what your skin needs are, what products you're using, which ones you need to switch out because you're not seeing the results. And within a matter of two or three months, you'll start to see your skin responding in a way that is helpful to you. And the reason I had created it is because your skincare plays such a critical role. You can watch tutorials all day on how to do makeup this way and that way. And what does this MUA say? What does this professional makeup artist suggest? But if your skin underneath that makeup is not in good health or is really uneven textured or is it has dry patches, all those makeup tips and tricks just will not work. So a good skincare is critically important. So if you need a good skincare regimen, then I check out the 90 day skincare program below. I've linked it here for you. It was designed to help you find what products, what routine works best for your skin so that then the makeup application has that final beautiful look that you're after. So if you guys are ready to get started in this fun glow look, and why not, it's the holidays, New Year's Eve parties are coming up, it's the perfect time to go a little bit crazy. And those of you that are not normally out of your comfort zone, just push past that boundary or barrier that you've given yourself in terms of makeup. See what results you get. You can always go back to your normal way of doing your makeup the next day. And no harm, no foul, enjoy this process. It's a lot of fun. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right, so let's get some glow from within and I definitely need it today because my shirt is way brighter than the rest of me and I don't know what's going on with this collar. So we're just gonna, we're gonna look past it today. The first thing to think about with a glow from within look is about 50% of this look comes from your skincare. And that's critically important because otherwise you're gonna be layering on a lot of product to get that glow from within. I'll put a video right up here of what my complete skincare in the morning and the evening is. I left the last two steps for this video just so we can start with good skincare. And what that means is putting on a nice moisturizer and really allowing that to get deep into your skin. And I am using the one that I am loving, which is this skin plumping cream from Hata Labo uh, out of Tokyo. I've really enjoyed this moisturizer, you guys. So we're just gonna let that sit in for a few minutes. I've got that song, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, stuck in my head and I cannot get it out. I won't hum it because A, there will be copyright issues and B, then you'll be stuck with that song in your head and I don't wanna do that to you. But that's, I've just gotta get that song out of my head. It's driving me crazy. I love it, I love it, but I love it the first time. By the 98th time, I'm not sure that I love it as much. I just added four pumps of my sunscreen, which is the final step in my skincare program, and then we are ready for makeup application. You can see I'm just adding a little bit of hydration to my skin with through that moisturizer, and then with a good sunscreen, you start to get that plumpiness and that dewiness in your skin already. Okay, the next thing that you wanna do is take your foundation, now, if you are oily skin, then you're gonna skip this first step. You're just gonna go straight with your foundation. If you have combination skin, normal skin, or dry skin, then this is the first step. You wanna take two pumps of your regular foundation, and for a daytime look, you're just gonna use about a little tiny bit, about one small, small drop. If this is an evening glam look, you're gonna use about a half of a pump. 
a half a pump or more will last you a couple hours of a nice healthy glow and then you start to look like a slimy mess. So it's sort of like Cinderella's clock at the strike of midnight. More than a half a pump come midnight, you, you gotta be done. And if you wanna wear it for in the day, then just a little bit of glow is all you're gonna need. It will last you for hours with not quite that strong strobing look. And in this process, you wanna mix the two together and make sure that the color of your highlight does not change the color of your foundation. And in some cases it can. In this case it doesn't, I use the YSL All Hours and Smashbox Halo does not change the color of my foundation. So I'm gonna mix those together and we're just gonna start, I've got sparklies all over my face from this shirt. Why did I do that today? So I'm just gonna put that everywhere alongside your nose, just everywhere on your face because you want that healthy glow everywhere, avoiding underneath your eyes. We're gonna go back and just put a plain foundation and or concealer in this area. Where you have fine lines and wrinkles, you're gonna avoid with this and go in with just your foundation. So for me, that's gonna be right underneath my eyes. I wanna avoid using this mix and I'll go back with just some highlighter and some foundation in a second. So with that, then you just wanna lightly blend it in. Now a dual fiber brush like this is, works really well because it's light, it doesn't grab the product too much. The one thing about it is you do have to go back in with a different brush, which we'll do that in a second, because these dual fiber brushes tend to leave just a little bit of brush strokes. So you can see I'm avoiding underneath my eyes where I tend to get some wrinkles. Well, I don't, I don't tend to get them. They're there and they just keep multiplying. <laughs> And you wanna take that, of course, onto your ears just a little bit, down your neck, just, so, just like you would your normal foundation. So you can see that's a nice, healthy glow. Now you could stop here if you wanted, but why would we want to do that? And now that that step's done, you're gonna to wanna to go into any of those areas that you didn't cover because you had fine lines and wrinkles and didn't wanna accentuate them with adding that highlight to them. And in my case, I'm just gonna add some foundation and concealer, and I'm gonna go right in under my eyes and you'll wanna do this wherever you did not cover with your foundation highlight combo. And just press that in. And this might be a little bit different for everyone. Again, it just depends on where you did, where you have those fine lines and wrinkles and you definitely don't wanna put some glowy highlighter there. Now that you've got that step done, you're gonna to wanna to go back in with a round, dense buffing brush and just go in and press all that so that you're sort of buffing everything together and erasing any lines that you may have left in your foundation from that dual bristle brush. Now, if you don't wanna use two different brushes to do your foundation and your highlight, you absolutely don't have to. You can put this combination on with whichever application you typically use, whether you use your fingers or a beauty sponge or brushes or whatever it is that you t tend to use for a nice, beautiful, soft glam night that really accentuates this glow from within. I like to do the two step because I feel like that first brush really deposits that color and that highlight into every nook and cranny that I want it to. And then this brush I feel just gives me that nice blurring effect and softness to the pores and tends to blend that foundation into my skin and really allows that glow from within highlight to come out. If you have dry skin, combination skin, or normal skin, Here's where you would stop for a day look. If you have oily skin, this is where you wanna join the process. And what's next is adding that powder on top of the highlight. Now again, if you have dry, normal, or combination skin, adding powder can be tricky, so we always wanna go in with a small, small brush. I use a fluffy eyeshadow brush whenever I'm adding highlight. And to add that powder highlight, you can go with a highlight that sort of matches what you're wearing that day. So mine's more of a pearly white color. If I was gonna wear this color shirt, for example, then I'd grab more of a mauve highlight to glow from within so that everything is sort of coordinated and there's not a contrast between your highlight and what you have on that's this close to your face. So a couple highlighters, you don't need to go purchase a new glow from within highlighter if you don't have one. The older we get, finding the right type of highlighter is really important because anything that has bigger glitter chunks, A, it's bad for the environment. It gets into our streams and our water systems and then goes out to the ocean. But B, it highlights the texture and the uneven textures in your skin. So you can pull out your eyeshadow palettes and find a light, light color that's really small, small shimmer to it and use that as a highlight. Or a few of my favorites, if you guys have watched me before, it's no surprise, this Stila in Kitten is by far my favorite because it's a creamy, creamy, creamy formula, 
but wears like a powder. So I love this one. This is the one that I'm gonna to use today. If you can't get your hands on this one, it's been on the market for a long time. You may not be able to get it as readily available as some of the others. The other one that I really like is the Incandescent Strobe Light Ambient, and this is by Hourglass. I like this one because it's really finely milled, very small, small, small highlight to it. Um, but today we're gonna use the Stila Kitten because I know a lot of you have this one. Another option that I do reach for from time to time is by Revolution, and this is their Reloaded, I think. Yeah, Highlighter Reloaded. So we're gonna grab the Stila Kitten today, and the key with this is the placement and the technique of the placement. So we're gonna just get a little bit on our fluffy brush. You wanna be careful to not have just a straight line through here. I like to start with that straight line and I take it just at the highest point of my cheek and then I like to go back in and sort of blur it and scribble it. So this way I'm really softening so it's that whole area is highlighted and not just a straight line. I think we've probably all seen that where you've got a straight line in the highlight and you don't know it till it's too late. And you'll wanna carry this highlighter in a C from right above your brow bone down to the center of your eye. So right about here is a C. Now, here's where it's gonna be different for everybody. If you've got crow's feet, you're gonna, your C is gonna sort of break and go there, jump over the crow's feet, and go back over to the brow bone. If you've got wrinkles up through here or you don't wanna highlight your forehead area, then you can just go right through here, skip crow's feet if you have them, and then just put a little bit highlight on that outer tail of your eyebrow. So just whatever's gonna be best for you, but once you've got that, then you just wanna go back and soften it and blur it. Now, if you have dry skin, then what this is gonna help is set that foundation that we put underneath without adding a lot of powder. And we'll do this on both sides. So I like to just go first and draw from the center of my eye out to those where those crow's feet start and then go back and soften it. Now you don't need a special brush for this. You can absolutely use your fingers and just go outside of the line. So you just, again, avoiding that harsh line. Jump over those crow's feet and go right up above. It's harder for me with my fingers. So I like to use a brush just in this upper area for sure. Then if, you, if your nose is pretty straight, then you'll wanna take your highlight not at the tip of your nose, not down here. You wanna avoid putting highlighter at that ball of your nose. Start right here at the center and go up just a little bit, covering just about this much of your nose, right through there. If, for example, you don't have a straight nose, then you wanna put a little bit of this highlighter right between your eyes, right about here. Then you wanna add a little to your cupid's bow. And then I like to add just a little bit right through here, really light, because I have the, that, the texture down here is not great on me, so really light, and then just soften it up just a little bit. Next, I'll grab a real small little brush and take that same exact highlighter and go right in the corner of my eye. And this is a really pretty day look if you didn't have any other eyeshadow on and you just put a little bit of this highlight right in that inner corner. It is a really pretty look regardless of your age. In fact, it makes you appear more youthful. It makes your eyes appear more bright. I think this little trick looks very flattering on women of all ages. Next, we're gonna add just a little bit of blush to warm up the face. And for that, I'm gonna go reach for my Natasha Denona Blush Highlighter Palette. Now, one of the things I love about this palette, you guys, I don't need to hide that mirror because I've kept the plastic piece on just for this reason, is not only do I love this powder, it's a, just such a flattering color, but this center highlight is a cream highlight. So if, for example, you didn't have this one to mix with your foundation, you could go in with just this after your foundation and then go over it with the powder. So you wouldn't need to use both. You could use this liquid or you could use your a cream as the liquid. So this next step again is for everyone and we're gonna go in with just a little bit of blush to warm up the face. And for blush, I really love doing a dual fiber fan brush because the amount of color that it deposits is so faint that I can build it, build it, build it instead of trying to take it away. That taking away blush is just hard, I think. It's just, it never looks right. But a soft blush look, I think, can be so flattering. 
Hopefully that's showing up on camera. I just have the one ring light and then one box light is all the lighting that I ever use. So I don't know if it's gonna be enough light to pick up for you guys, but in the mirror, it's really a very pretty strobe. So I hope you guys are doing this look with me. It can be really pretty. It doesn't scream greasy. It doesn't scream my skin is so oily that it's coming through. It's just a nice flattering look, especially if you're heading out. I just put a little bit of blush across my nose. I don't really use it as bronzer, but it was on the brush, so we did. Now, this next step is for everyone, dry skin, normal skin, combination skin, and oily skin, and that's to go in with just a cosmetic type cloth. These I buy from e.l.f., and I love them. And I like to just bend it and go over every part, pressing everything in, including that blush. And this also helps pick up any excess oily. So if you have oil skin, oily, this helps pick up any excess oil from your skin. And if you have dry skin, the reason that I like this is it just helps your foundation and everything melt together and look really nice and minimizes the look of the texture. If you have oily skin, this helps to absorb all of that oil before you set it with powder. For our next step, this applies to only those of you that have oily skin. You're gonna to wanna to take a nice big fluffy brush and a translucent loose powder and just go over everywhere on your face just to set everything and help absorb some of that oil throughout the day or the evening. Now this last and final step applies to everybody, whether you have oily skin, dry skin, combination, or normal skin, and that is to set it with a setting spray. And as we age, finding a setting spray that does not contain alcohol is really important because most of them do, most of our more popular setting sprays do have alcohol in them and that tends to dry your skin. I love the Makeup Forever Mist and Fix. I've highlighted this one before. This is my second bottle this year, I'm loving it. In fact, I'm putting together a video of my top 20 products of this year and this was one I was like, do not forget to put that in there because it's one of my favorites. So with that, I just like to spray, let that dry, and then I'm just gonna apply a little bit of lipstick to complete the look and we will be finished. Well, there's the completed Glow From Within, AKA strobing look. What do you think? I hope you like it and I hope you did it with me. It's pretty easy to pull this look off. Just applying the right products in the right order that we just went through, whether you have oily skin or dry skin is an important part of the process. Making sure that the highlighter does not change the color of your foundation. And the longer you want this look to last, the least amount of liquid foundation you want to use. A little tiny bit to last all day, which is, seems backwards, right? It seems like, no, I, if I want longer, it should be more. No, it's the opposite, because this will have a tendency to start to look greasy, so the less of this you put on, the longer you're gonna get this look. But if you want a real good high strobe type look for an evening wear out, then you wanna add a little bit more of this into your foundation mixture for that long-term wear, unless you have oily skin. So that does it for me. I hope this was helpful. It's really not as hard as I probably made it sound. You're gonna look great for whatever event you choose to get that glow from within look, or if you wanna do it every day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.